Final game of the night in Columbus. It's Florida Atlantic and Memphis. And the Owls coached by Dusty May. What a job he has done his fifth season. He's had a winning record all five years with the Owls as we take a look at the starting lineups. And Memphis, they've used 16 different starting lineups this year, the most in the country. They've had injuries up and down throughout the year. This is a group they feel very comfortable with. And for more on Memphis, with Penny Hardaway leading the way, we send it over to Jamie Erdahl. Andrew, Memphis has the oldest player in college basketball this season. DeAndre Williams is 26. He knows he's the oldest. Everyone seems to know he's the oldest, but he's not sure many people know why he's the oldest. Penny Hardaway came to his defense recently, said, you don't understand, when this kid was in high school, he was convinced to go to virtual school with the promise of scholarships. That did not pan out this way. Williams had to earn his high school degree. It took him a long time. Goes to Evansville, plays a year, but that's not the right fit. Enters the portal, finds Memphis. He shared his life story with Penny Hardaway, and it has been good ever since in this connection for De DeAndre Williams at Memphis. It's an incredible one-two punch between DeAndre Williams and Kendrick Davis. In the last three games, those two have combined to average 54 points, 16 rebounds, and eight assists per game. And the big thing about them two, Andrews, they get to the free throw line. But one thing about this game, Memphis one of the best in the country at defending the three. FAU, 10 threes a game. They are one of the best, number 12 in the nation, at three-pointers per game. Better guard the three-point line. Elijah McCadden had it poked away, but recovers with eight on the shot clock, and Kendrick Davis comes to get it. These guys are small but scrappy, too. Kind of what we just saw in a lot of ways. Davis for three. And tip right back to him. Davis comes in, and he's on the board. He is tremendous, as you need to be. At his size, he scored 22 points a game. You have to be great with that floater. And he is tremendous with that floater in the lane. And Steve, look, no matter what, you're pumped up to play in the NCAA tournament. But now, knowing that you just had that upset, does that change anything here? It doesn't really change anything, but in the back of your mind, you're saying, you know what, if we can win this game, we got a heck, not, <laughs> it's going to be a tough game, but we got a heck of a chance to get to a Sweet 16. Vlad Golden, the Russian native, puts Florida Atlantic on the board. Yeah, he's their third leading scorer, about 10 a game. The seven-footer. Transfer from Texas Tech. Here's Penny Hardaway's son, Jaden. And his first jumper is good. And you'll see Memphis is one of the fastest playing teams in the country. They want to play a quick tempo. And FAU doesn't want to play slow, but they're not quite in that range with Memphis. Brian Greenlee connects from the outside. Now, this is a team that shoots a lot of threes. 37% of their points come off the three-pointer. And both these teams will be primarily man-to-man. -man. You'll see Memphis, though, press a good amount of the time when they score. Chandler Lawson, the offensive rebound. McCadden in the paint. Short. And they love to shoot those threes in transition. So the Memphis transition defense, especially on the perimeter, is going to be big in this game. Laura Atlantic won the Conference USA regular season title and the Conference tournament title. Knocked off UAB in the championship game on Saturday as Elijah Martin is hitting the deck and off the mark on his shot. Williams, step back jumper. And Golden is there. Alex Lomax at the scores table set to check in for Memphis. The Tigers team that's coming off a win Sunday against Houston in the American Conference Championship game. Greenlee, another three. Back to back for Brian Greenlee. And you know, they are a little small on the perimeter, but Memphis is not that big, especially when Lomax comes in and Kendrick Davis. They are similar in size. They're going to have to get out on those shooters. Lawson, turn around, lost it going up. Grabbed out of the air by Nick Boyd. Boyd, the lefty for three. And a push off inside. And a foul called against Chandler Lawson. 
here's what getting the ball in the post can do for you. On that double in the post, they get it out quickly and then reverse the ball to the other side of the floor. That is picture perfect of what you should do in a double team in the low post. Penny Hardaway goes to his bench with not only Lomax, but also Malcolm Dandridge checking in. Our officials tonight, Lee Cassell, Brett Smith, and Evan Burrows. Davis, step back three. And the rebound by Williams. This is their best team, Memphis. They like having Dandridge back. He was hurt for a lot of the year. Getting back in the flow. McCadden on the attack, and he draws the foul as three Owls hit the deck. What a year it's been for the Florida Atlantic Owls, located in Boca Raton, Florida. A school record 31 wins. And just their second NCAA tournament appearance. The only other one came way back in 2002, when as a 15 seed, they lost to Alabama. Dusty May, the Conference USA Coach of the Year. First time he's been a D1 head coach. In his fifth season with the Owls. Yeah, with Mike White of Florida. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. You know, we just watched a game where number 363 out of 363 in height won the game. Well, they're not quite as small, FAU, but they're number 329 in average height. And you know what their motto is in the locker room? They say heart over height. So they buy into it. They know they're a little undersized, but they don't shy away from it. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you both. And a 10-second call against the Owls. First turnover by either team. And as always, Memphis, one of the team, best teams in the country at forcing turnovers. They force about 15 a game. Shot clock at eight. Dandridge, nifty pass to McCadden. Memphis, Memphis is the opposite. They only make about six threes a game. Had to put that one up with the shot clock winding down, and the tip is good. DeAndre Williams gets credit for that bucket to tie things at eight. On the baseline, Martin's blocked. And then on the follow, Davis misses. Elijah Martin is a tremendous athlete. He gets, he had some great dunks in the Conference USA tournament. That one knocked away. It'll be Memphis ball when we come back. Even so far, a couple of threes from Brian Greenlee for the Owls, and we're tied at eight. Bill, thank you. Back here in Columbus, and there is FDU coach Tobin Anderson. I don't think in his wildest dreams he thought he'd be scouting this game. Maybe he did in his dreams, but now it's a reality as FDU will take on the winner of this game on Sunday. He was looking at his phone for a while. He must have a thousand texts. <laughs> Tied at eight. Just getting going here in the nightcap in Columbus on St. Patrick's Day. And one thing that we're going to see, too, with FAU, they have the number one bench in the country in terms of scoring. McCadden hits from the outside, just his 10th three of the yeah, year. And that's, that's a bonus, no doubt. But one thing, Florida Atlantic, they play nine guys. Seven of, them, seven of them can make a three. The two big guys don't play together. They got Rosado in the game now. But he's always surrounded by four guys that can all shoot. Martin's three, no good. And the rebound ripped down by Williams. And Memphis plays one of the fastest paces, so they're going to want to push this up. They're top 10 in the country in fast break points. 7-0 run for the Tigers, but they can't add to it there. Jalen Gaffney, the UConn transfer, with the ball. UConn beating Iona earlier today in the tournament. Forrest nearly lost it. A scramble for it with five on the shot clock. Gaffney fakes the three, takes the two. 
No good. Rebound down low. And a foul is called before the shot. That was Giancarlo Rosado getting the rebound. And Kendrick Davis tried to box him out, but just Rosado is just too big for him there. I mean, he, he really just manhandled him out of the way. The Owls have missed six consecutive shots. A team that averages 78 points per game, which was second best in CUSA. You know, this is one of those games, Andrew, where something's got to give because Memphis is one of the best defensive teams from three in the country, and you're playing a team that shoots the three that well. Let's see what wins out. Weatherspoon hits the three. Brandon Weatherspoon ties it at 11. Last four games, the Owls struggled from three, just 31%. So far tonight, they're three out of six. They try to force you sideline and keep you there. You can see how they guard when the ball is on the wing. Franklin's jumper halfway down and out. And Gaffney calmly brings it up. Weatherspoon. Oh, great look. And Rosado finishes. Dandridge tied up inside gets it back Kendrick Davis D3 capable of making that shot, but not that time. He definitely has that kind of range Great crowds all day here in Columbus it began with Michigan State knocking off USC, then Marquette took care of Vermont, and then the one everyone's talking about, FDU, knocking out Purdue. Here's Gaffney, five on the shot clock. Bounces it down low, and Rosado again with the right hand. And they did a good job of helping, but then stayed too long and left Rosado by himself. Meanwhile, Memphis on this end has gone cold. They've missed eight of their last ten shots. Williams for three. And the drought continues over three minutes without scoring now for the Tigers. And the problem for Memphis is, is when they're not running, and they're not a bad half court team, but they much prefer to be out in the open court. Rosado turn around and a foul. Number three will have a chance at a three point play when we come back. It's a 9-0 run for the Owls. Yeah, Rosado doesn't look like a guy who averages six points a game. Great move on the fadeaway. FAU up six. Welcome back to Columbus. I'm with Memphis head coach Penny Hardaway. Coach, points in the paint. FAU just scored six straight. I know they're a great three-point shooting team, but how do you muck up the middle a little bit? Well, we got to do better on ball defense. You know, they're creating triggers, and now we're having to step up, and then they're dropping it off. So we'll have to do better with that. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, there's no doubt. The, and they're a great defensive team. They hold people to 40% field goal percentage, top 30 in the country. And they, as I told, talked about earlier, three-point defense is great, too, holding people to 30 but right now getting beat off the dribble a little bit, which is allowing FAU to get in the paint. And Penny told us yesterday that Florida Atlantic looks like a video game at times, the way they space it out, and he said we have to take away the three-point line, and of course now Florida Atlantic's made an adjustment. And they have, and the thing about Florida Atlantic, the reason why they're 31 and three is because they have four guys out there all the time on the perimeter that can pass, dribble, and shoot. So they can beat you off the dribble if you come way out on them. They are a tough team for a reason. It's a 10-0 run, and Rosado has scored the last seven for Florida Atlantic, but Jaden Hardaway with his second bucket stops the run. I mean, that's not where they usually get their points from, but their inside guys have done it so far in this game. Memphis with pressure, and it leads to a turnover. They love to press about 25% of the time. They're going to set up their pressure, which is one of the highest in the country. Lomax has been playing for Penny Hardaway since the sixth grade. Two of them took a, a picture at midcourt during practice yesterday that you could tell was very special for both of them. I love Lomax. He's so tough. 
Williams, shot clock winding down. No good. And that's the other thing. Even though they're small, FAU is a very good defensive rebounding team because they keep their man in front of them, so they're always in good box-out position. Rosado has had the hot hand down low, fighting for two more, and he's fouled. Looks like a different guy. Rosado averages five points per game. And Rosado going back to the line right now. And he's already got seven. Our tournament summary, everyone talking about it right here in Columbus FDU, the second 16 seed to win. Seen a lot of Cinderella's that are making their case in the first two days. You know, we were with John Calipari a couple of weeks ago, Andrew, and we did that game against Arkansas, Arkansas and Kentucky and Arkansas, and we talked with him about how many teams can win it. Now, I've been saying all year, I think there's like 25 teams that can win it. He said 40. And guess what? He may be right. This is the year where somebody who's not a top four seed can win the national title. It's happened a few times, as we showed in the graphic earlier tonight, but it could happen this year. Completely wide open. We're seeing it in the first two days. And Rosado with one more free throw. And even the ones that didn't win, a lot of them were really competitive games. Nine points for Rosado as he heads to the bench. Lomax flies up ahead, finds Chandler Lawson on the wing. Tipped around and right to Gaffney. That's to Janelle Davis, who's been a little quiet so far. Golden nearly coughs it up. Good job by Boyd to bail him out. Midway through the first half. Lomax. Oh, Davis goes right around him for two. These guys play much bigger than they are. Largest lead of the night for the Owls. It's a 14-2 run. Davis, no good, and Gaffney wants to push. Tough shot, well defended. Davis in transition. Oh, they had the lob, but McCadden with a great job defensively. And out of bounds to Florida Atlantic. Well, we talked about John L. Davis in the open, posting up, got Lomax on him, was a little small, and he comes back with the left hand. Really pretty move. Gary, Indiana native, who not only made the first team all CUSA, but was also the sixth man of the year in the conference, had a minor injury earlier in the season, and they worked him back slowly off the bench where he played well, so he kept coming off the bench is making the start tonight for the eighth consecutive game. Weatherspoon's three no good, and Kendrick Davis comes away with it. And this is what they have to do. They got to go, just like that. Davis misses, but there is Lawson with the follow. Great follow by Lawson. He's so athletic and long, running the floor hard. Five to shoot. Boyd has to put one up. He does. The three is good. Nick I mean, Boyd with the shot clock expiring. And Lawson came out on him with those long arms, and he still made it. That was not an easy three. McCaddy tried to answer. He cannot. And Golden with the rebound. Here they come again. The Owls looking to attack. A lot of middle pick and rolls with the big guy. Offensive foul called on Janelle Davis. You can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. There's the owl. Feeling good so far, a 10-point lead. Do want to point out that Penny Hardaway told us Keontae Kennedy will not play today. Kennedy broke his right hand last month. We saw him dribbling yesterday during practice. 
But Penny told us he'll be further evaluated on Tuesday. So maybe if they advance, he'll be able to play going forward. And he's an important guy because this team doesn't shoot the three well, but he's a good shooter. And they need that right now. They have missed 14 of their last 18 shots as there's a foul away from the ball. It's going to go on Davis. There is Keontae Kennedy. Eighth straight game. He's been sidelined with a broken hand. That foul on Davis was his second, so he has to come out of the game with 8.01 to go in the first. Jonathan Lawson for three. And McCadden goes up high for the offensive rebound, had it taken away, gets it back. Fans wanted to travel. And now a stoppage. And a timeout. Timeout on the floor with 7.41 to go in the first half. And Florida Atlantic out to a 10-point advantage. The winner moves on to see FDU in the second round in Columbus. Points off the bench for Florida Atlantic. And a moment ago, Jamie Erdahl with Dusty May. Coach, against a team that's so good defensively, how important is it to play the take-what-they-give-you game? Well, we have to take better care of the basketball, especially against the pressure, and we've got to find a way to rebound down here. Emotionally, how'd you guys handle the end of that game and getting you guys up for your start of your game? Well, obviously it was exciting for everyone in the arena, but our guys were focused on us. Um, so yeah, they, they, they were concerned with this game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. I mean, they were out rebounding Memphis 14 to 10, so I think they're doing pretty good so far. Franklin feeds it inside, McCannon down low for two. Really good ball movement that time by Memphis. Side to side, reverse the ball quickly. May putting Rosado back out on the floor with nine points. Boyd through traffic, look at that. High arcing hook is nowhere near it. This is where Memphis is at their best. Jonathan Lawson for three. Doesn't get the bounce. McCadden the follow. It also opens them up for offensive rebounding when they're shooting quick in transition. McCadden already has nine points. He averages just seven per game. 6.40 to go in the first half. Oh, easy play and a finish by Martin. FAU picking apart that Memphis defense last time. Franklin for three, and Memphis is starting to heat up. The deficit is five. Demarie Franklin just a 26% three-point shooter, but he knocks that one home. Yeah, they only average six threes a game, so whatever they get from out there is a bonus. Another back cut. Blocked by Franklin. And five on four the other way. Davis driving, and he is fouled. You take a look at this cut here and what Kendrick Davis does. He turns, watch, stop it right there. He turns to look at the ball, and that's when he loses his man on the back cut. You always have to see your man and the ball at all times. Kendrick Davis turned his head, lost it. Kendrick Davis has made 219 free throws this year. Needs three more for a single season school record. You can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Yeah, number eight in the country, free throws per game. Eight. That's pretty good for a guy six feet tall. Pretty good for anybody. And 85% at the line on the season. Goes one out of two. And here's that Memphis pressure. Defense! 
Golden Williams to the deck, and Golden finishes, and Penny Hardaway was looking for a foul. Yeah, I didn't think it was a charge. I think he was close. Could have been close to a flop. That three is no good for Hardaway, but a foul on the rebound called against Jalen Gaffney. You see Vladdy Golden here. They set a good up screen. No. No Not a call. Charge. Golden with four points. Kendrick Davis is just one of five so far for three points. Franklin lost it going up. And it's grabbed by FAU. Michael Forrest, the senior from Lauder Hill, Florida. First turnover today by Memphis. Franklin with the rebound off the miss by Forrest. They've done a decent job lately in limiting the three-point shots by FAU. FAU shooting 50% in the first half. Memphis, 33%. Davis trying to get going, and that will help. It's a two, and he's got five points. He has a great pull-up game. Left, right, obviously a tremendous score. And Davis with the steal. Two on one the other way with Franklin. Davis all the way. And a blocking foul called on Gaffney. Three fifty-eight to go in the first half. This guy has a whole lot in his bag of tricks. Pulling up, taking it to the basket. Four point game. Mascot dance off in lap who won? I'm gonna go with the owl, I have to say. Really? I Interesting. Thought, I, I thought the tiger was a little sluggish in this, but the, I thought the owl was, was giving it all. Okay, so Lap awards the owl as the dance-off champion. It's the greatest culinary competition in the world, period. Tournament of Champions hosted by Guy Fieri. All new episode Sunday night at 8, 7 Central on Food Network. What is your experience as a mascot dance-off judge? <laughs> what, are you being funny Is now? this your first time? That was my first, well, you, well, you put me on the spot. <laughs> you even said when they started, you said, boy, this is what you like, Lap. I was, I was like, really? Well, since when? I, I remember a D2 game we did a long time ago. You were very interested in uh, <laughs> the rail splitters, I think they were. Oh, uh, is that How do you remember yeah. that? That was your first time as a judge. I think the Tiger looks a little shaken, to be honest with you. I think he, he got word that he lost, and we'll see if he can recover for the second half. You know, one thing we got to keep our eye on, back to the game. Oh, one thing, we, one thing we got to keep our eye on is Memphis is number 342 in the country in percentage shots from three. They've taken 11 threes already in this first half. Owls lead by three. Greenlee already a couple of threes in the first half. And there's Davis playing with two fouls for FAU. Gaffney, extra pass. Greenlee fakes the three. Now he'll take it. And the weak side rebound is grabbed by Lomax. Good job by Memphis that time defensively. Here comes McCarthy, and he took a couple of steps. Look like a running back there. <laughs> second turnover from Memphis. Penny Hardaway, second consecutive year taking his alma mater to the NCAA tournament last year. They knocked off Boise State in the first round, then played arguably one of the best games of the tournament in the second round against Gonzaga when the Bulldogs prevailed in the end by four. That was a real battle. We were there, that was out in Portland, Oregon. And we asked Penny what his team learned from last year's experience, and he said it taught us to be professionals and to remember who we are. 
because Penny pointed out in the second half of that game, Gonzaga just went to Drew Timmy the entire half. And, and for Penny, that was a reminder that if we get in some trouble, we need to go to Kendrick Davis and DeAndre Williams. That's right. And he said, I hope my guys learned that because when they went to Timmy, he was doing it. Greenlee for three. Not big rebound by Williams. Well, at least they have them making some tougher contested threes off the dribble. Hardaway catching shoot three. It's good. Jaden Hardaway with seven points for Memphis. And Jaden Hardaway is one of the better three-point shooters on the team. It's a 10-2 run for the Tigers to tie it at 29. A lot of Memphis fans in the house making some noise. Greenlee. Throws in the offensive board and he's fouled. Coming up, at and at the half. Scores and highlights in the latest NCAA tournament news. It's all coming up on at and at the half. Everybody on this team plays between 17 and 27 minutes. Nobody more than 27, nobody less than 17. Nine guys. And this will be a conference matchup next year as Florida Atlantic is moving to the American Conference starting in July. Oh, Rosado spinning. How about it? Giancarlo Rosado in double figures. I watched like four tapes of these guys, and I didn't, never saw him do what he's doing in this game, ever. He's got 11 points to lead all scorers. Career high is 15. Davis, yes. Memphis up by one. He can pull the trigger so fast. First time the Tigers have led since it was 11 to 8. Their defense in the half court has really picked up. And you know what? If Rosado scores, those are twos. The thing that FAU does is make threes. So they're not making them now. Oh, great defense by McCadden for the steal. Tried to throw it off Davis. It comes right to the other Davis, Kendrick Davis. Romax fakes the three. Back out Kendrick Davis, 4-3. Franklin the offensive rebound, and he draws the foul. Seeing both these teams hustle all over the court. Well, tune in to Inside March Madness and check out the play of the day presented by the Buick Encore GX. That foul was on Jalen Gaffney, and that is his third. So Gaffney goes out with Franklin at the line for a one-and-one. One. Comes up woefully short. Martin for three. Tough shot and the rebound grab by Lawson. Yeah, I mean, I really like, you can see why Memphis is such a good team defensively from the three-point line. They're so long, they contest shots very well. And Penny Hardaway calls a timeout with 32 seconds to go in the first half. Tigers up by one. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Giancarlo Rosado. What a first half for this young man from West Palm Beach. Yeah, I mean, he's four for four from the field. He has 11 points, and he's making great moves around the basket. Just looks like a more accomplished scorer inside than he's really shown all season, and playing with tremendous confidence. Averages just over five a game. He's got 11 tonight. And there's a 12-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock for Memphis. I think Penny would trade those twos, though, and keep the perimeter players from making threes. Oh, he's shooting that. Davis for three. Yes. 
That was a really good play after that timeout by Penny Hardaway. Davis has a dozen final 10 seconds of the first half with the Memphis fans on their feet. That was a great job by Penny. Boyd for three, and he can't answer. Tipped around, Lomax, and time expires. Memphis closes the first half on a 16 to four run. The defense got really into it in the half court. Owls led by as many as 10 in that first half. Jamie is with Penny Hardaway. Coach, you were down by as many as 10 in that half. What started to work offensively for you? Well, we got some movement. We stopped going one-on-one. -on -one. Got some ball movement, man, and moved our defense and got better looks at it. Defensively, do you feel you find yourself most effective as they continue to move guys in and out and rotate? Absolutely. We're moving guys as well, but right now our defense is locked in. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Penny Hardaway and the Tigers 20 minutes away from moving on to the second round. That's the end of the first half with Memphis up 35-31. After the break, it's AT&T at the half. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Start of the second half in Columbus as we take a look at the Dick Sporting Goods first half stats. Really entertaining first half. Memphis down as many as 10, but they close the half on a 12-2 run. Back court side with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Jamie Erdahl coming up. That was a well-played first half. And the key for Memphis late, Kendrick Davis got hot. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, he's such an explosive player, very difficult to guard in the half court, especially in transition. He has all these floaters. He's also a tremendous three-point shooter. And what helps him a lot is having that step back. Because when you're small like he is, he can get shots off with that step back, and he can take it out to the three-point line. Just a really, really good player. A dozen for Davis in the first half. Memphis 23 and 2 when leading at halftime this year. And they've done the job defensively. 4 for 14, FAU, one of the best three point shooting teams in the country. Johnnell Davis for two. And Jamie Erdahl, what did Dusty May have to say? Well, I talked offense with Dusty May. He said the ball was sticky for them, which means they weren't driving and kicking enough. He said Memphis's length and athleticism defensively really bothered his team. So expect for them to move the ball a lot more in the second half. He said Giancarlo Rosado is a skilled guy one on one when he matches up against these center. So we wasn't surprised at all. Well, for a guy who happens to six a game, I was surprised. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Strong move on the other end by DeAndre Williams. And you know the other thing that Memphis did was they won the battle on the glass, 10 points to five on second chance shots. That's what they need to do. Golden tried to muscle his way down low, but the long rebound comes out to Davis. And a whistle. And they're going to look at the clock. Dusty May grew up about 20 minutes from Bloomington, Indiana. First summer camp he ever attended was Bob Knight's camp at IU. And then he ended up becoming a student manager for Knight in the late 90s. Bounced around as an assistant a bit. Three years at Florida with Mike White. And then the Florida Atlantic Athletic Director, Brian White, who's Mike's brother, hired Dusty to get the job at Florida Atlantic. And what a great move it was. And they're taking a look here to see if the ball hit the rim, which obviously it did. It did. You know, it's funny. A lot of guys that were managers at Indiana became coach. Lawrence Frank was a Bobby Knight uh, assistant who became a Terrific coach in the NBA, and now is in, uh, in the front office for the Clippers. That's a large tree, the Bob Knight tree. Large. So the shot clock's at 14. Greenlee, a couple of threes in the first half. Memphis has been closing. I mean, that is a really good contest right there by Lawson. Really good. This Memphis defense holds opponents to 40% shooting, which is top 20 in the country. I mean, there's a reason why this team 
does it at the three-point line defensively and does it overall defensively. Very long and athletic and playing hard. Davis. And the ball goes out of bounds, but a foul is called. And that's going to go on Memphis. You can't escape the rage of all elite wrestling rampage. Unleash the action right after NCAA coverage on TNT. That foul call was on DeAndre Williams. That's his third. He's got to come out. At least for five, six minutes. He's on the floor still. He's got to make sure he doesn't do anything crazy here and get a fourth. Davis for three. Hardaway the rebound. See, those are tough threes. McCadden leaves it for Williams for two. When Memphis gets up and down the floor, they can go with anybody. Franklin at the scorer's table for Penny Hardaway. You assume he'll check in for Williams, who's still out there with three fouls. He's got to be careful. Oh. Did they just get Williams? They did. Oh, my goodness. They did. I, I... Wow. That is number four on DeAndre Williams. That is a huge mistake and a huge play. They should have gotten him out as soon as he got the third. Somebody should have jumped off that bench. Now he's going to sit for the next 13 minutes. You can't bring him back in until there's five to go. Unbelievable Maybe. turn of events here. With 17.35, DeAndre Williams comes out with his fourth foul. Let's see if Florida Atlanta can take advantage. And another foul is called on Memphis. This one on Franklin. Wow. Yeah, that's a biggie. He should have just had it in his mind. I'm going to let this guy catch it. <laughs> and to get a foul like that on top of it. Here's the last foul on Franklin. Yeah, that's, he knows that that's a big year. The most recent foul sends Elijah Martin to the free throw line. Here's Rosado back on the floor as Golden heads out. Quick chat with Dusty May, his head coach. Elijah Martin is hounding the cabin. Lawson finds Davis. Davis on the drive, and a foul is called. That one's going to go on Rosado. Still a little stunned that Williams got his fourth foul, that he was still out there. Yeah, I mean, you know, when a guy gets three, it's like, don't even, just get somebody in there before the next, before, the, before they start playing again. Because you never know what could happen. Now you're in a situation NCAA tournament game. One of your best players has to sit. He averages close to 18 points and eight rebounds a game. And it's going to cost eight, eight minutes, eight more minutes that he can't play. He's going to come back in at 12. Now he's not coming back in until four. That one goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Memphis. McCadden gets tangled up, and they're going to take a look. Wow, this is unraveling here for Memphis a little bit. Did McCadden do something that will bring a flagrant one in play? Let's take another look. Number zero in white. Oh, you know, Elijah Martin. Well, the extra push. It's going to be a dead ball technical for sure. Now, he, he did get bumped first, I thought. And then that was a little bit of a flopper on top of it. Be interesting to see how they come back on this one. 
Gene Steratore is with us. What do you think here, Gene? You know what? In my opinion, you've got a dead ball contact technical foul because you don't have the ball alive play yet. You see an elbow come up, and then he pushes and drives that elbow through his opponent. This is a great look. It's just unnecessary, unwarranted. It's dead ball contact technical. There's been a few situations here we've seen during live balls where some arms and, and body parts have been put into precarious situations, causing some frustration. And this is where officials need to recognize some of that now. And in dead ball situations, talking to some players and managing these situations so that this intensity doesn't elevate into these types of instances. And I think we're in that space right now, guys. Yep. Yep, I mean, obviously, that's a, that's a clear dead ball technical, and the difference between that and the flagrant is anybody can shoot a technical. Even though Elijah Martin is a 79% free throw shooter, he may shoot it. Davis is a little better. Already four team fouls against Memphis here in the second half. And we're just over three minutes in. You know, these are the kinds of things that change games around. He picks up the fourth. Now this happens here. A bad 40 seconds for Memphis. The fourth on Williams and now this, which they continue to sort out. Yeah, well, clearly McCadden was the guy. Here comes Evan Burrows to fill us in at the table. There it is. You and Gene all over it. Dead ball technical foul on McCadden. Anybody can shoot it, and it's red ball. Wow, what a turnaround here. A little bit similar to what happened last year in the second round from Memphis, where they looked so good in that first half, and then things quickly changed in the second half for Gonzaga. Now we have another sudden change here. With Davis, an 84% free throw shooter at the line. So the lead is down to two, and it's Owls basketball. They're going to have to get themselves together now, Memphis. And they got a guy like Kendrick Davis, who's an experienced guy, to settle this thing down and also has the ability to take the game into his hands. Greenlee on the left wing. Cross court pass to Davis. Davis drives in the paint. Nowhere to go. And good defense there by Franklin to force the tie up. And it's Memphis ball. Yeah, that was a good defensive set for Memphis that time. Closing out hard on the shooters. They can't get a good three off FAU. Best Coke ever. Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Davis high off the glass, and a foul is called. Now you're seeing why he's got eight in the country in free throw attempts per game. This kid gets fouled a ton. Began his career at TCU, then transferred to SMU. And after three years at SMU, he said he just wanted to play in the NCAA tournament. Transferred to Memphis and now getting his chance and for more we send it over to Jamie Kendrick Davis has experienced a, a tragic event in his life in the fall of 2021 His father John Davis went missing in outside of Houston. He's a truck driver He left to return a truck to somebody and he was never to be found again The truck was found his mother and Kendrick as well. They're searching for answers They do not know where Kendrick's father is it's such it's a sad story and Penny Hardaway has truly taken on a father figure role because he knows that this weighs on one of his best players every day, whether or not he wants to talk about it. Penny knows that Kendrick needs him at this point.
Kendrick has a son, Kendrick Jr., who was at the game today, that he knows uh, would want to spend a lot more time with his grandfather if he could. Yeah, Jamie, well said. We hope the family can get some answers. Great pass. Hardaway finishes. Nice cut there. Jaden Hardaway having a nice game. He's got nine points. Greenlee on the drive off glass for two. Useful for Brian Greenlee. Two point game in Columbus. And a travel by Jaden Hardaway. Takes us to a timeout. A spot in the second round is on the line. Emotions running high between FAU and Memphis. Back in Columbus, Memphis has a two-point lead on Florida Atlantic, and Jamie was just talking about the Kendrick Davis family, his mom in the jersey, and his son, one and a half years old, Kendrick Jr., who Kendrick says is my everything. What a season for Davis, averaging 22 points per game. He was the MVP of the American Conference Tournament. In the three games, he averaged 28 points per game. This kid has really done it all in his career. As soon as they switch the screen, they get up into guys so they can't get open for that three. Gaffney off balance shot oh. gets it to go. That was good defense. Tough shot. Gaffney ties the game. And look, oh my gosh, DeAndre Williams is really? at the scorer's I, I, table I, with 1440 to go. I saw him get up and I'm like, really? Lomax connects. I, I'm speechless. You and me both. Four fouls? I wouldn't bring him in with three right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> wow. Now, I'd have much less problem if he had three to bring him in, but now? Martin throws one up and draws the foul. And that's the fifth foul on Memphis. Well, on the one hand, DeAndre Williams, 26 years old, he knows what he has to do. He has to stay out of foul trouble, but this is really rolling the dice. He sat for just three minutes and 26 seconds. There's, you know, the thing you worry about the most is a charge, because, yeah, defensively, you can control yourself a little bit more. I'm, I'm a back ball. I'm not going after this. But when you go into the basket, you know what I mean, and on offense, and somebody steps in, that's where you got to really, that's where it could happen. You dive for a loose ball, you just happen to climb over somebody. And now, let's understand this. If you're FAU, go right whoever, at him. Whoever he's guarding, you're going to say, give it to him. Hey, Rosado was doing it when guys were in foul trouble. They'll probably, I'm going to think they're going to put him on. I don't know who they're going to put him on. We'll see. It'll be interesting. What a gamble here by Penny Hardaway. And they're really backing off of Dandridge. Now, Dandridge doesn't shoot the ball. They beat Dandridge, but Davis is past too high. Hit the rim. Owls in transition. Davis slips one to Rosado, but he couldn't get a handle on it. Thirteen and a half to play. Lomax, the Memphis native. Here's Williams on the baseline. Passes to Dandridge and off glass for two. Really good pass there and a good catch in traffic. 47-44. And he's guarding Davis. Not the easiest guy to guard. Williams not backing off. No. Davis will send it out. Three on the way. Martin, no good. And the rebound to Dandridge. Well, I mean, he's long. He's just got to keep Davis in front of him. Kendrick Davis. No. 
Howells with numbers if they hurry. Greenlee finds the trailer. Martin fakes the three, drives in right at Dandridge, and he missed it. Wow. Dandridge up ahead to Davis and a foul at midcourt. That's the third on Brian Greenlee. It could have been a travel. Could have been. Greenlee's going to go out with the foul. He's got three. Gaffney has three. And of course, we've talked about it all half. DeAndre Williams now with four. Davis out to Williams. He'll take a three. Dandridge the offensive rebound. Dandridge given big minutes off the bench, but Williams misses on the follow. Yeah, I mean, he really tracked down that rebound, too. Went after that one. Gaffney left alone. Come on, Bob. Golden on the glass, couldn't finish. It comes to Davis, and he'll pull it out. Locates Forrest. Forrest, step back three. No good, and going up to get it, DeAndre Williams. Well, they can't make a three. Owls are four of 18 from deep. This is a team that entering today, top 20 in the country, shooting 37% from deep and making 10 a game. Dandridge, oh, rejected by Golden. Sends it out, six on the shot clock for when we come back. There's a lot going on in this one, including a spot in the second round. Florida Atlantic and Memphis battling on St. Patrick's Day night. Summary, and for Florida Atlantic, they have missed 10 consecutive three-point attempts. Yeah, I mean, that's the key there for Penny Hardaway. His team has done an unbelievable job at defending the three-point line, and if they can keep doing that, this could work out well for them. Barely Dickinson awaits in the second round on Sunday. DeAndre Williams playing with four fouls. Shot clock at two. Williams no good. Tipped high in the air and grabbed by Weatherspoon. A scoring drought of three minutes for the Owls. And, but, you know, Florida Atlantic has not really been there in the zone now, Memphis, which they do not do very often at all. Davis in the paint, off-balance shot, no. Rebound Dandridge, who continues to provide good minutes. And the zone is a good idea with a guy with fouls. Why not? Lomax just inside the line, knocks it down. Lomax, the heart and soul of this Memphis squad. Missed nine games in January and February with a torn groin. They thought he'd be out for the year, but he's been able to get back. Penny Hardaway said he's about 80 percent. But 80 percent of Lomax is pretty good for Penny Hardaway in Memphis. They just got to make sure they, they go. Now they're going like, to a switching man to man. Gaffney's rejected by Dandridge. Boy, Dandridge has been really good. Williams, good pass. Ooh, and Dandridge the finish. Dusty May calling for a timeout. Malcolm Dandridge, the senior from Memphis. Getting it done for Penny and the Tigers. First, the block on the defensive end. And then Dandridge at the other end. Throwing it down for Memphis. The second round begins tomorrow at noon Eastern on CBS with Furman and San Diego State. At 5 p.m. Eastern, TNT has the NCAA Nissan tip-off show. Eight games across CBS, TNT, and TBS over 12 hours. And our astute director, Andy Goldberg, pointing out you've got the Princeton Tigers, the Missouri Tigers, the Auburn Tigers, and that's why Andy gave you a shot of the Memphis Tiger. Nicely done, Andrew. <laughs> With Bill Thayer, our producer, and Elijah Martin hitting a three. 
That's their first three of the second half. That's ten and a half minutes in. They had missed their last seven consecutive shots before that triple. Davis off the front of the rim and Gaffney the rebound, pushing up ahead. Forrest in transition, leaves it for Rosado, and a foul is called. That's going to go on Elijah McCadden. Lomax thought he took the charge in the lane. Now, he did get knocked over. I didn't get a good look. Good kick out to Elijah Martin. And they finally make one. Oh, wow. I don't know. Looked pretty clean to me. But it was called, and that was the sixth team foul against Memphis. So Florida Atlantic is at the line the rest of the way. And Rosado, he struggles from the free throw line. Rosado with 13 points tonight. And the offensive rebound is grabbed by Weatherspoon. He goes right up with it. No good. And the rebound grabbed by Martin. That'll drive you nuts. Dandridge, Dandridge, great defense, but he throws it to his own bench. Good try by Dandridge. You know, you give up an offensive rebound and a missed free throw, those are the ones that always drive you crazy as a coach. Nine minutes to go in Columbus. Martin for three. We good, we good, Credit DeAndre Williams. He's done a good job of staying out of the way of that fifth foul. He's thrown a good pass here and there. Hasn't really been able to score since he's been back, but just him being on the floor has helped. But why not with a seven? Well, would have had the seven-point lead. You would think maybe take him out at that point. I was going to ask you that, but I figured. I knew what you were going to say. You would have taken him out three times ago. Yeah, no doubt. And even with a four-point lead, you got the, the media timeout coming. Not a bad time to get him out. Clearly, Penny trusts him. That's why he's out there. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Florida Atlantic. The rules are simple. Win to get in. Tune in as NBA teams battle to earn their spot in the playoffs. The NBA play-in tournament begins April 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern on TNT. And he spent 14 seasons in the NBA, number three pick by Orlando, a four-time All-Star with three different NBA teams. I remember the first time I saw him was at the Nike All-American camp, which was held at Princeton University back in the 80s, late 80s. And he was a tremendous high school player. And you saw he decided to take Williams out. So DeAndre Williams back to the bench with eight minutes to go. I think if this gets tied, he may come back with him quickly, but as long as they can keep a lead, I'd keep him out. McCadden took too many steps and a travel. Turnover number six by Memphis. Tigers on top by four. Florida Atlantic down by four. They have missed 21 of their last 27 shots. And you got to say this, though, Andrew, the fact that they're only down four, having struggled that much, is really a says something about the way they're playing on the defensive end of the floor that's keeping them in the game. And all it takes for a team like this is to get a little bit hot, which they're capable of doing, as we know the kind of three-point shooting team they are that all of a sudden they can steal this, so. Let's check in with Jamie. You know, Dusty May's huddles are really fascinating. He has a very happy disposition in the huddles. It's like he's trying to convince these guys, like, you're in this, believe in the shots you're taking. These are your great opportunities. Your looks are working for you. He's looking at them because I think they look distressed. He's trying to exude confidence in this moment for themselves. Well, I mean, that's great coaching. I mean, that's what he's doing. He wants to be positive with these guys. He sees that they're struggling. So it's certainly, and they're taking good shots, but they're also playing against a team that is very good defensively. He's such a basketball junkie. He is constantly watching film, trying to learn more about the game. Even when he goes on vacation, 
he has to get his wife to give him two hours a day just to watch a little bit of film or read something. He's allowed two hours on vacation to get his basketball itch for the day. <laughs> I personally believe it's good to get away from it a little bit, or at least nowadays, it's not like when I was coaching. When I was coaching, when the season ended, you couldn't coach him again until October. Now, these guys are doing this all year round. Combined, these two teams have missed 21 of the last 24 shots. And DeAndre Williams on his way back in. At the scorer's table with 7.25 to go. Rosado, got away the travel maybe. Now yeah. Davis with three to shoot, throws one up short. Rosado down low, blocked by Franklin out of bounds, and that should be a shot clock violation. Yeah. Take another look with the shot clock at the bottom right of your screen. But what mm -hmm. are they looking at? They're only supposed to look at a shot clock on a made basket. They shouldn't be looking at this. Seems like there's still time on the shot clock. Point six. Wow. I... Penny Hardaway took his alma mater to the Elite Eight back in 1992. It was called Memphis State back then. We played them in the Final Four in 1985. The three with the shot clock winding down, and wow. Boyd drains it. Wow, that's a big shot. They're actually calling it a two. So give Boyd a two, and it's a two-point game. Remember that one. Davis answers. Kendrick Davis with 16. He has that pull-up game down pat. Getting closer to crunch time. And Greenlee with the strong move. It's about the easiest basket that they've gotten tonight. Now we're seeing a little bit of offense. Williams. Lomax with the left hand. Yes. Tough shot over the seven footer Golden. Now Davis with the right hand. No. Golden, the offensive rebound and put back. And now all of a sudden, neither team can miss. 55 53 with six minutes to go. Davis for three. Oh, he's, he's and Davis. Oh no, Davis is hurt. Davis is down in pain at midcourt. Kendrick Davis oh, is trying to hobble over to the bench. Oh no. That's not good. As soon as he went down, he asked the referee to stop the game because he knew how much pain he was in with his mom. In disbelief. Oh. Ankle. Mm. And you feel for the man. Oh. Here's another look. He got tripped up after the three, lost his footing, and went down at midcourt and immediately grabbed his right ankle. And it was right in front of us, and as soon as he right went down, his foot. he asked the ref to stop the game. And look at Davis in the huddle. He knows he can't go out there, so he's telling his team, go get this done.
I think that's what he's telling him. Now it looks a little more confrontational. Yeah, he's hot. I'm sure he's really frustrated. Him and Dandridge jawing at each other. It's been a strange game. And Dandridge now is looking out. A lot of confusion over on that Memphis bench. Yeah. But ball back in play as we approach five minutes to go. Tigers up by two. Back to that matchup type zone. Now it's man to man. Martin scoop shot, no. Golden, another offensive rebound. Had to take it away though by Memphis. Golden has five offensive rebounds. I'm just surprised that they don't have Kendrick Davis down the end of the bench, like trying to either tape it or, or something, you would think. Or he just can't come back in. Lawson will take a three. Wow. And he gets the bounce. Big shot there. Six threes he's made all year. Can Davis answer? He can! Here we go! Coming down the stretch once again in Columbus. And Kendrick Davis is at the scorer's table. It appears he's going to try to check in. Oh, that's great. Pass. Williams inside, and he draws the foul. Yeah, Kendrick Davis is walking much better. At the next time out, they're going to have to go oh. back and look at this shot. I called it a three. The ref said it was a two, but they'll go back and look at that. So Florida Atlantic may have one more point coming. That was definitely a three. Williams gets the free throw to go in. And Davis is sitting down again. He was at the scorer's table for a moment, and now is back on the bench. My guess is they're going to wait till the under four. It's like stretching that right foot. Williams makes them both. 60 to 56 with 4.10 to go. Davis, another three is good. Janelle Davis is heating up. He's got a dozen. Yeah, this guy's starting to roll. We talked about him in the open. One point game for the moment, but remember that could change at the next timeout. Williams, no good. Joel's push. He just settled for the fadeaway jumper that time. Can't settle for that. Uh -oh. Davis again. Not this time. And DeAndre Williams, the rebound with three and a half to go. Penny Hardaway is saying, let's slow, slow things up. Lomax, shot clock at eight. Over to Lawson, another three. Too strong, and the rebound knocked out of bounds. It'll be Owl's ball when we come back. What a wild second half this has been. Will we see Davis? Will Florida Atlanta get another point? A lot to find out when we come back. All right, so we were wondering what happened on the Memphis bench, and we think we've got another answer for you. Watch Kendrick Davis came out, was yelling at Dandridge, and then his teammate pushed him. So that's why there was some confrontation and chaos on the Memphis bench.
And here's the third answer. Kendrick Davis is back on the floor. Jamie Erdahl, over to you. Andrew, that was about 10 seconds of that video. This went on for at least 90 seconds. Kendrick Davis continued to try to engage with Malcolm Dandridge. Coaches had to come over and talk both of them down. Dandridge was trying to move down the bench to re-engage with Davis. It was not a comfortable scene. Penny Hardaway sat in silence for the first minute of the timeout just to get the emotions back to a level to play basketball. Jamie, thank you. And Kendrick Davis doesn't look great on that ankle. Give him credit for trying to gut it out. He knocked it away. And it looks all right there, trying to track it down. Now, shot clock at two. Florida Atlantic with Boyd. No. And Janelle Davis has it right back inside to Rosado. And the Owls are up by two. They've gotten hurt on some offensive rebounds in this game. And, you know, Kendrick Davis, yeah, he doesn't, he can do something, but he's definitely not 100%. Hardaway on the attack, travel. and a travel is called. That was Janelle Davis coming over to help on defense, and he created the turnover. They really not, they need to get something for DeAndre Williams. I mean, it all depends, obviously, on what Kendrick Davis is capable of doing. Hard to tell so far. A 9-2 run for FAU. Rosado wants it. Oh, he turned it over. And last touch by Florida Atlantic. Sloppy possession there for the Owls. Yeah, why you would try to throw it to the big man on the wing. I don't understand. DeAndre Williams with the denial there forced the turnover. Let's see what Kendrick Davis has now. He brings the ball up with 1.45 to go. FDU awaits the winner of this one on Sunday. Here's Davis with Rosado on him. Davis going to try to take him. Puts him a wild shot. No good. Offensive rebound. Williams count it and one. Penny Hardaway took a huge gamble playing DeAndre Williams most of this second half with four fouls. And Penny has been rewarded for his trust in the 26-year-old. Hey, you got to give the kid credit. He was able to stay in there. He went back in with four fouls and 14 minutes to go in the game. Came out one time for a couple of minutes. And now Kendrick Davis out of the game. I think what Penny's thinking is on defense, get him out and see what he can do on offense. Williams completes the three-point play. Memphis back up by one. And now here they come with their pressure. Good job not allowing Davis to get the ball. Boyd drives in the paint, nowhere to go. Now Boyd with five on the shot clock. Boyd, off balance, two, no, tipped up and in! Elijah Martin puts the Owls back on top. They've been very scrappy on the offensive glass. Penny Hardaway calls timeout with 54 seconds to go. Back and forth we go on a crazy night in Columbus. A look at our game reset. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Owls with five team fouls, Memphis with six. Yeah, I mean, Florida Atlantic with that one foul to give. DeAndre Williams has played 13 of the final 17 minutes with four fouls. Incredible. And his team down by one. If Kendrick Davis is in the game, you gotta think they're gonna run a high pick and roll. If he's in, He's a guy who's got to be thinking about taking a shot. McCadden hands off Davis.
Ten seconds to shoot. Got to get the right guy shooting the ball, and that's not the right guy. McCadden, short. The tip is good! And Penny Hardaway calls another timeout. DeAndre Williams went up there and tipped it in to put Memphis back in front. Yeah, I mean, that was fortunate because the wrong guy, McCadden, took that three-point shot. Williams has scored the last seven points for Memphis. He did a good job of parking himself in a good position right here. That was a heck of a oh, tip. What a play. That's an unbelievable play because he was boxed out pretty good. Double-double for Williams. He has 13 points and 12 rebounds. Now they've got to dig in on the defensive end and get on the glass. Really, this team is really scrapped on the offensive glass. They have 16 second chance points to Memphis's 15. You got to box out and get this rebound. That's some confusion at the scorer's table. It looked like Kendrick Davis. We're hearing that they tried to put Lawson in to check in for Davis, but Lawson never checked in. You can't make up the last five minutes of this game. <laughs> so Davis stays out there. And now one thing, if Florida Atlantic does not score here, they got to go to the glass like there's no tomorrow because they even have a foul to give. So if they miss, send everybody to the glass and tell them, even if you go over the back, don't worry about it. We're going to have to foul anyway. Davis with his defender slipping. Davis inside. No, Williams the rebound. And there's the foul with 19.8 left. That was the one last foul. Now the next one, so they better get up there because they're going to have to foul down one. Yep, Memphis will inbound under the basket. 16 fouls on the Owls. The FAU coaches instructing who would be the best player to foul. Franklin, a 61% free throw shooter for Memphis, is out there. And now Hardaway comes in for McCadden, who's a 63% free throw shooter. And Lomax cannot move. He has to stay in place, so they've got to get this ball in bounds. They get it to Davis, right back to Lomax. You better no get foul. it out yet. 16 seconds left. Your foul, guys. Oh, oh they turned it over! Davis, with nine seconds, he tripped to the ground. A scramble, Memphis has it. And they call a tie-up, and the arrow favors the Owls. Memphis was trying to get a timeout. Hardaway was on the ground, but instead of a timeout, it's a tie-up. And now the Owls call a timeout with five seconds on the clock. I mean, what a bad turnover by Memphis, really. And surprisingly, that FAU didn't foul right away. There's only 17 seconds to go. You're down one, you have to foul. And this is just a really bad turnover. He left his feet. And take a look at the end of this play because Penny Hardaway was asking his son, Jaden, did you try to call timeout? You see oh, Lomax. Yeah was trying to call a timeout. Yeah, they did try. But this is something that's not reviewable. You're going to see it right here. Right on the ground. Jaden Hardaway. Oh, and yeah. Davis and Lomax on Memphis both trying to call timeout, but it wasn't granted. And instead, the tie-up with the possession arrow favoring Florida Atlantic. They had 5-10, so 5.5 to go. This is a Florida Atlantic timeout, each team with one timeout remaining. Gene Steratore is with us. What do you think of that last play, Gene? I agree with you guys. I think Lomax is definitely calling timeout early. The, here's the predicament the officials are in, is that you are focused so much on when this held ball occurs or if it occurs, 
so your eyes are down on the play to see who has possession or if there's dual possession and now you have a player on the side that's calling timeout pretty close to you but your eyes are so focused on who has possession of the basketball that you miss that but I think clearly that Lomax is calling timeout when Memphis State has has secured the basketball yeah I agree but I also agree that it's a tough call 5.5 to go Florida Atlantic down by one and Penny Hardaway will call his final timeout what a night here in Columbus it started with FDU becoming the second 16 seed to ever beat a one knocking out Purdue and now this second half has been one for the ages with three lead changes in the last one minute and 23 seconds. Some of the things that have happened in this half are still hard to figure. But we do know that FDU awaits the winner of this one. Memphis up by one. Right now it's all about defending on one play and getting a rebound. That's what Memphis has to do. Your FAU, you get something quick and get it inbounds. All these guys are very good off the dribble. Not a bad thing to try and drive it and get to the free throw line with a one and one. Janelle Davis to inbound. Here's Boyd. Five seconds left. Boyd drives. Scores! With 2.5. Lomax at midcourt. McCannon doesn't get it off. And the Owls win. The first NCAA tournament win in Florida Atlantic history. And it comes in dramatic fashion over Memphis. And the boy made a great play because instead of just firing it up, he knows the best thing to do is to drive it and maybe get a foul. He just lays it in the basket. No help comes. It comes very late. Just a great play by Boyd. The reaction from the FAU bench. And then Lomax had it at midcourt. Didn't have enough time to pass to McCadden right there. There's only one second left, and McCadden doesn't get it off in time. He needed to shoot that from half court. I mean, obviously, it wasn't going to be a great one, but he needed to shoot that. 32nd win of the year for the Owls, and the reaction of the Memphis bench. Penny Hardaway chucks his water bottle. Just a stunning defeat. As we go over to Jamie Erdahl. I'm letting these two guys have a moment. Nick, just like you drew it up, huh? Walk us through that last play. Man, uh, I told Coach I got it. Give me the ball. And um, he drove a great play. I showed it. He jumped. He got to the rim. I don't know. I can't really explain. I'm just having fun. Uh, I got to thank God. But I've been waiting for a moment like this my whole life. You just jumped on a table after an NCAA tournament win. Is this everything that you have worked for in your life? Most definitely. I'm in the gym every day. And, uh, it's beautiful. I, I don't know. I just got to thank God. This coach smiles at you guys in every timeout. What does that mean in terms of confidence in a game like this? Man, I, I don't know where I'll be without this guy. For real. I love him. Coach, I observed you in your huddles. You're smiling at these guys. At times, this game was so tough to play in. What was it like to coach him? Well, I have a lot of faith in our guys. They put in the work. They're they're together. They've done this all season. Even on nights when a lot went wrong, they stayed the course and believed in each other, and they made some big-time plays. You've been at this program now. You've been building it, building it. Why was this team the one to get this first win in an NCAA tournament? Leadership in our locker room. These guys, they, they hold each other accountable uh, and, and to a very high standard as well. Just a special group of people. You know that FDU team beat Purdue just before you. What'd you watch from that game? What do you know about this team? <laughs> I know they play really hard and they believe it's going to be a great game. Just like a team that you played pretty hard against. Good luck or congratulations. Thanks, Jamie. 
FAU will take on FDU for a spot in the Sweet 16, just like we all expected. This is March. What a day and night here in Columbus. I want to thank our entire crew as we try to process <laughs> what we just saw for the last 12 hours. FAU wins. Tournament continues live right now on CBS, TBS, and True TV. For Steve Lapis, Jamie Erdahl, Gene Steratore, and our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalan saying so long from Columbus. You've been watching the men's basketball tournament on TNT.